Have you ever asked God to give you a sign? You had to make a, a decision and you were like, God, just give me a sign and I'll, I'll, I'll know what to, what to do. You ever ask God to give you a sign? I, I've done that. Um, and, and frankly, uh, God, God didn't give me a, a, a sign. I, I remember I was, I was watching um, Bruce Almighty. Have you ever seen that movie? with uh, Jim, Jim Carrey. And uh, there's this moment he's so frustrated because he's having issues at, at, at work and he's trying to figure out his life and he's, he's driving down this road and he's like, God, just give me a sign. And all the road signs are like telling him what to do and he's not paying attention. God, just give me a sign. I love that movie, by the way, because God is played by uh, Morgan Freeman. And don't you just think like Morgan Freeman, like maybe God's voice sounds like, like his? I, I used to think maybe God's voice sounded like uh, James Earl Jones, but then I realized that James Earl Jones is Darth Vader in Star Wars, and so that, that, didn't, that didn't work. And then I was, I was actually talking to a guy, and he reminded me that James Earl Jones is also the voice of Mufasa on The Lion King. So that works. But at the end of the day, Morgan Freeman, voice is a little calmer. You know, maybe God's voice <laughs> sounds like, like that. But have you ever asked God for a, a, a sign? Like, like you really needed direction, and have you ever wondered, why doesn't God just like pull back, you know, the clouds and like stick his face in the bowl that is our reality and just let us know that he's there? Have you ever wondered why God doesn't, doesn't do that? Uh, why doesn't God reveal himself in like these big ways? Give me a sign. Show me your face. You know, audibly speak to me. Why, 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 doesn't, God, why doesn't God do that? We're going to talk about that today. We've been in this series called End of the Wild, and I want to welcome you to church at home in the car, wherever you are. I want to celebrate with you, those of you who are being baptized this weekend. Please let us know about that. If you've said yes to Jesus and have not been baptized, we're celebrating that this weekend. You can do that uh, in your home, in the swimming pool, bathtub, river, lake, baptism.sv.cc. But I want to celebrate with all of you who are following Jesus this weekend through, through baptism. Why doesn't God give us a sign? Why doesn't he just speak audibly? Why didn't he just make himself known in, in supernatural ways like that? In this series, Into the Wild, we've been looking at the life of Elijah. And today we're in 1 Kings chapter 19, picking up where we left off last weekend. Here's what's going on with Elijah. He's experienced amazing miracles. I mean, he has seen God do some supernatural things. Like fire from heaven, he prays over this boy. This boy comes back to life. Elijah was fed by ravens, by a river. They would bring him meat and bread in the morning and in the evening. Elijah has seen some amazing things, but he's exhausted, he's tired, he runs, he forgets God. God leads him to a place. It's the mountain of God. It's, it's Horeb, and Elijah's in a cave. And, and that cave, I talked about it last week, it's, it's almost like, if we use it as a metaphor, a darkness of our mind where, where we get sometimes. And, and God speaks to Elijah and begins to draw him out of, of that cave. Pick up with me here in 1 Kings chapter 19, beginning in verse 9. It says there, that's Elijah, there Elijah went into a cave and spent the night. He's at Horeb, the mountain of God. And the word of the Lord came to him. This is while he's still in the dark while he's still in the cave. And God says to Elijah, basically, why are you running? What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah replies, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left. And by the way, he's not the only one left. We're gonna see that uh, later today in, in, in this passage. And so Elijah's kind of having this pity party in, in the cave. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. And God says, go out, Elijah, and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. I talked about this last, last week. Come out of the cave. Come out of the dark. The light still remains. Come out of the darkness. Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord. And then God says this, for the Lord is about to pass by. And, and we read that and, and we're like, here, here, comes, here comes the big moment. 
the Lord is about to pass by. We're going to talk about what happens next today. And if you've ever wondered, why doesn't God just give me a sign? We'll answer that question. I want to invite you to watch this. Has there ever been a time in your life when you wanted God to give you a sign? Maybe you even asked him for a sign. It could be that uh, you needed to make a decision. Should I take this job? Should I not take this job? Should I marry this person? Should I not marry this person? God, give me a sign of what you want me to do. It could be that you were in a difficult time and maybe you just wanted a, a sign that things would be okay. Have you ever asked God for a sign? H have you ever had a moment in your life where you just wanted God to prove to you that he was, that he was there and that he was listening? In 1 Kings chapter 19, God has sent Elijah into the wild and he finds himself in a cave and he's wanting to hear from God. And so God prepares to, to pass by and a great wind comes up and the Bible says that God is not in the wind. And an earthquake happens and then it says that God is not in the earthquake. And then fire appears. You've got earth, wind, and fire. Are you catching a theme here? And fire appears. And the Bible says that God is not in the fire. And then the Bible says that it's, it's quiet. And it's still. And God speaks to Elijah in a whisper not in the sign of the wind, not in the sign of the earthquake, not in the sign of the fire, but God speaks in a whisper. Why would God do that? And why is that in the scriptures? And why doesn't God just give us a sign? Why does he whisper? Why is he in the stillness? I'll tell you why. It's because he's close. See, what God wants with you and what God wants with me is a close relationship. The kind of relationship that a child has with its loving father. God wants an intimate relationship with us. And intimate relationships aren't found in the noise, but in quiet, intimate conversation. So he wasn't in the wind, in the earthquake, or in the fire, earth, wind, and fire. He was found in the whisper. And it's in the silence where we hear his voice. So Elijah comes out of the cave and into the presence of God and these supernatural things happen, at least seemingly so, and yet God is not in those things. Where is he? He's in the stillness. He's, he's in, the, in the whisper. I told the story. I, I, I want you to, to read it here with me in the scriptures. First Kings 
19, verse 11. So he goes out, he's outside of the cave. The Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart. I, I love the way this is written. Tore the mountains apart. That's some wind right there. And shattered the rocks before the Lord. That's power. The power of God is there. But the Lord was not in the wind. Relationally, his power is on display. But that's not where he is. Relationally. After the wind, there's an earthquake. And obviously God causes the wind, God causes the earthquake, but he's not in those things. Those things are an echo of his power. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a what? A gentle whisper. And when Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face went out and stood at, at the mouth of, of, of the cave. So the Lord is going to pass by. Elijah doesn't see the Lord in, in relationally in, in all of these supernatural things. These three things happen. What, what's amazing to me about this passage of scripture is Elijah had such a close relationship with God, even though he's tired, even though he's exhausted, even though he's on the run, he knew God to the extent that it was the whisper right? That drew him out. I'm about to pass by. These supernatural things happen, but it's the whisper that Elijah, that Elijah recognized. Then a voice said to him, and it's the same conversation. What are you doing here, Elijah? And Elijah replies, I've been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. This is going to sound familiar. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. Let me ask you a question. Why the repeat of the conversation? Like, didn't we just read this? A few verses up, and, and now it's, it's being repeated. Here's why. And, and I said this in the room this past weekend, but I did not say it for church, church and home in the car, wherever you are. Um, I, I want to make this point because I, I missed it last weekend on, online. And, and I want to apologize to you for something. Uh, there's something that uh, I have said that, that's true, but, but there's something negative on the, on the back end of it. And, and I've said it because it's been said to me. And let me, let me just break this down. So why the repeat of, of the conversation? The thing that I've said that I want to apologize to you about that's true, but there's a dark side to it, is that God wants to use you. And that's true. God does want to use your life. He designed you. He crafted you for, for a certain purpose. And in fact, for lots of different reasons. You're you because God designed you and you're wonderfully made. But here's the thing. When we say God wants to use you, we're also communicating something that's negative. For example... I use a fork when I eat, right? But when I'm done with the fork, what do I do? Discard it. I don't think about it. I don't care about it until it's time to use the fork again. Uh, this is not how God feels about you or, or me. You are not something that God just wants to use. You are someone that God deeply, deeply loves. Why the repeat of the conversation? Because God loves Elijah. He doesn't just want to use Elijah. He, he loves Elijah. And so in this whole interaction, there's, there's all kinds of patience. I mean, last week we, we, we talked about it. You know, the angel uh, makes angel food cake, right? For, for Elijah and, and just tells him to, to eat and, and rest. The angel doesn't preach him a sermon. Why? Because God loves, loves Elijah. By the way, I'll give you a little, little preacher bonus. Uh, last week when we read that passage, it said that the angel of the Lord was, was caring for Elijah. Usually in the Old Testament, when we talk about the angel of the Lord, we're talking about the pre-incarnate Jesus. What does that mean? Jesus has always been. He didn't just show up in, in the womb of, of Mary, all right? Jesus is, is, is part of the Trinitarian God. You have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So Jesus has always been. And when you look at the Old Testament and it says specifically the angel of the Lord, the word angel just means messenger. 
And so a lot of theologians believe that when you see those specific words, the angel of the Lord, that's actually the pre-incarnate Jesus. Now think about that for a minute. That means Jesus fixed Elijah some dinner and touched him and told him, eat, rest. Why does God repeat the conversation with Elijah? Because he's drawing him in. It's, it's, it's a relationship. Why does he whisper? Because he wants us to be close to him. Why? Because he's close to us. We, we, just, don't, we just don't realize it. Let's see what happens. I'm the only one left, and now they're trying to kill me too. It's the repeat of the conversation. And the Lord says to Elijah, go back the way you came. And for some of us today, this is God's word for you. Um, you have run the wrong direction and you know it. You know it. It's okay to run as long as you run to God, not away from him, but you've run away from God. And God's word for you today is go back the way you came. Go, go back to him. Go back to where you know you're supposed to be. Go back the way you came. And then he says some other things. And then as, as we finish the passage we're looking at today, God says, I reserve 7,000 in Israel. Elijah, you're not the only one. Get out of the pity party, right? You've been in the cave in the dark. God draws him out with a whisper, with this close relationship. It's a relationship of trust. He says, you're not alone. There are 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. Why the whisper? Why doesn't God just pull back the heavens, stick his face, right, in the terrarium that is our universe and reveal himself? Why, why, why doesn't he, he do that? I'm gonna give you three things today. You can take notes on the Sun Valley app. Why, why the whisper? Why the whisper? And, and just so you know, if you're frustrated <laughs> with God, like, why doesn't he do that? I, I just want you to know you're not alone. I get so frustrated with God. I, I want you to know in this season, right, I've, I've got to make like monumental decisions uh, for our church on conflicting information. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I'm going, what's the truth here? Like, what's the truth with this and that and the other thing? And every once in a while, I'm like, God, could you do what you did in the Old Testament? Could you like a hand like just shows up and writes it on the wall for me? Like God speaks through a donkey one time in the Old Testament. Could you send me a donkey, right? Or could you speak through my dog, Charlie? Like God, could you do some, something supernatural? Like why the, why the whisper? So if you ever get frustrated with God when it comes to those things, you're not alone. I, I can totally relate to that. But there's, there's reasons behind why God whispers. There's reasons behind why God does what he does and why he doesn't do what, what he doesn't do. Why, why, the, why the whisper? First of all, number one here in, in your notes, uh, God is relational. God is relational. God wants a close, intimate relationship with you. If you're taking notes, I'd, li I'd like you to write this down. Intimacy does not thrive under pressure. Intimacy does not thrive under, under pressure. For all of you who are married, I'm, I'm gonna prove this to you right now. Have you ever like planned something? I'll talk to all the dudes. Have you ever like planned something for the anniversary and, and you went all out and like, you know, it was gonna be magical. The dinner was going to be magical. The music was going to be magical. You, you know, the, the romance at the end of the night. Come on now. It was going to be magical. Woo! We've been married this long. It's going to be a magical moment. And so you came into that with all this pressure. And you want it to be so great. But what happens when we put all that pressure on it, right? This is going to be such a powerful moment. What happens? Intimacy just, just kind of goes away. Because intimacy doesn't thrive under pressure. Th think about this. One, one time I, I took my son on, on a fishing trip and I was like, this is going to be the most amazing thing and he's going to love it. You saw a video of me a couple weeks ago, fly fishing. I, I learned to do that a few years ago. I'm, I'm still learning. There's lots of room for improvement there. But I was like, man, Josh and I are gonna have such amazing time. He's gonna love fly fishing. This is gonna be great. Dang it, he's gonna love it, right? And I put so much pressure on it that what? I kind of squelched it. 
You know, I don't think I ruined it for him, but he didn't quite respond the way I wanted him to respond. And there was so much pressure there. And intimacy didn't thrive between us. It was kind of, it was kind of squelched. Does that make sense? When there's pressure, relational intimacy doesn't, doesn't happen. When, when, when we tell God, God, here's what you must do for me to trust you, follow you, believe in you. We're putting pressure on that relationship. And by the way, we don't, <laughs> we don't tell God what to do. He doesn't work for us. The relationship he wants with us is in the realm of, of, of trust. And when we demand a sign, that is a complete lack of trust and, and faith. We are literally saying, I will believe if. And this is not the relationship God wants with you. He wants you to remember what he has done. He wants you to remember who he is. The cross, the resurrection, his, his love for, for you. And it's in those quiet, relational moments, listen now, where we choose to trust. That's where intimacy with God thrives. That's why Elijah doesn't go out of the cave, right, with the earthquake when the Lord's about to pass by. He's coming out of the cave, but he didn't go all the way out and stand there on the mountainside with the earthquake or the wind or the fire. What draws him out? The whisper, why? Because Elijah knows God. He knows God. He's seen his power. But Elijah doesn't just want the power. Elijah, in that moment, in his desperation, needs a personal relationship. God meets him there in, in the whisper. Why the whisper? Because God's relational. Num number two, why the whisper? I said it in the video. Because God is close. Because God is, is close. Um, if, if you're taking notes, write, write this down. Holy ground is not about a place. Holy ground is not about a place, but a person. His name is Jesus. Would you write that down? Holy ground is not about a place, but a person. His name is, is Jesus. I, I was looking at some things this, this past week in the New Testament. Uh, Jesus says it a, a, a lot. He says this phrase. Here's the phrase. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with, with the Bible, perhaps that's, that's new for you. If you grew up in Sunday school or you know a little bit of the Bible, that, that will sound familiar. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. What does that mean? Listen close, hang tight with me. In the Jewish mind, when they thought about heaven, they were talking about three different realms. There was the atmosphere, that was considered heaven. There's the stars, that's considered heaven, the stars in space. And then there was even a place they believed existed above that. And that was called heaven as well. Um, if you're familiar with the Bible, there's this one moment where the apostle Paul talks about the supernatural experience he has with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus, and he's caught up to the third heaven. Does that sound familiar? Literally what the apostle Paul is saying is God took me to a place beyond the stars. You know what we call that? That's awesome. <laughs> beyond the stars. But listen, let me, let me make this point. Okay, stay with me, think with me. We don't live in a uni, uni's one. We don't live in a universe. We live in a multiverse. There are varying dimensions, thus beyond the stars. When Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is at hand, here's what he's saying. I'm giving you access. Listen now, I'm giving you access through your faith in me to the spiritual realm. Let that sink in. I'm giving you access to something that exists in the atmosphere that you at this moment, without faith in me, do not have access to. In and through our faith in Jesus, listen, holy ground is anywhere we give God our attention. Why? Because if you said yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit has, has moved in, literally into your mortal body which means your antenna is connected to the spiritual network where, where God re resides. You can experience his presence right now in the here and now. A ton of us think Christianity is about the hereafter, heaven and hell. It includes that, but it is primarily about right now. Christianity is about right now. Your relationship with God is about right now. God wants you to experience his presence right now. His power is available right now. God is close. 
That's why he whispers. <laughs> He's right here. Holy ground is not about a place. It's about a person. And he's wanting you and I, listen, to turn our face in his direction. What does that mean? Just give him our attention. This is why I've been teaching you to pray. You know, come Holy Spirit. Lift your palms to heaven. Come Holy Spirit. And in the stillness, let God minister to you. Why the whisper? Because God is relational. God is close. And here's what I want you to write down. And you're not alone. In fact, right now, wherever you are, would you just say it out loud? I am not alone. Would you say that? Let's say it together. I am not alone. Let's say it again. I am not alone. Let's do it a third time. I am not alone. If you've given your life to Jesus, I'm gonna quote him. He will never leave you or forsake you. You are not alone alone. You're not forsaken. He hasn't given up on you. That there is nothing to fear. You may feel alone, but feelings aren't facts. You may feel forsaken, but feelings aren't, aren't facts. You may feel like it's all over, but feelings aren't, aren't facts. You're, you're not alone. He is forever Regardless of how you feel, he is forever with you in the here and now and in the hereafter. Why does God whisper? It's mind-blowing, right? Let it sink in. Because he loves you. Ha! Huh. Because he wants to be close to you. He's not into showing off for the world. He's into showing up for you. Close, personal relationship with him. Listen, I, I know that a lot of us, if I could be so bold, probably all of us, are frustrated in some ways. Perhaps we're even frustrated with God in, 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 in some ways. Welcome to the human race. Welcome to the wild that is the journey of faith. But listen, your heavenly father loves you. He's close. Trust in him and experience his presence. Let's take a moment and pray together. Would you pray with me? Let's pray. Father, thank you that in and through our faith in Jesus, the kingdom of heaven is in hand. And right now, wherever we are, Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. Father, we invite your presence. Jesus, we invite your presence into this moment. And we ask that you might fill us. Give us ears to hear the whisper. And may we live our days, each and every day, close to you. And may all the ground we walk, because we're focused on you, be holy ground. Teach us, we pray, in Jesus' name, amen.